Welcome back to Hover Unboxed. All right, so last week I checked out half a dozen of the more affordable Radeon RX 5600 XT board partner cards. And today the plan was to check out the more expensive versions, but those plans have now been delayed for a few more days. And the reason for that being, since publishing the original video, I've learnt that MSI and Gigabyte both have 14 gigabits per second VBIOS versions for their respective models. In the previous video, I noted that the Gigabyte WinForce OC and MSI Mech OC models didn't feature a 14 gigabits per second BIOS, and that's not entirely true, though at the time I wasn't necessarily wrong either. After completing all my testing, Gigabyte released a new BIOS, but for some reason, they failed to notify me. Believe it or not, I don't troll the support pages all day looking for updates. Anyway, the 14 gigabits per second BIOS from Gigabyte came out a few days before the video went live. And as I said, a bit annoying that because Gigabyte did send me this particular graphics card for review. They knew I was reviewing it. And I had already asked them a few times if there was a 14 gigabits per second BIOS coming. Uh, they said there was probably some sort of update planned, but they weren't sure when. Anyway, they didn't let me know, but it turns out it's here now. So we will do some updated testing and see if it is worth applying that particular BIOS update. As for MSI, I have no idea when their 14 gigabits per second BIOS became available. And technically at the time of making this video, it's not. But despite that, some people do have it. And you might ask, how is that possible? Well, MSI made a 14 gigabits per second BIOS for the Mac OC and recently shipped models will have that BIOS. It's also meant to be available via their live update software, but that's not actually working at this point in time. So you can't get it that way. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, that issue will be resolved as I have made MSI aware of the problem. And I've also requested a standalone BIOS upgrade option like what all of their competitors offer. That way you don't have to install the clunky MSI live update software. Apparently MSI is working to make that happen at our request. So fingers crossed you will see that soon. Now, the interesting thing about these two models getting 14 gigabits per second memory support is the fact that they were the worst performers of the half dozen cards tested in our previous roundup, and not just in terms of FPS performance, but more importantly, thermal performance. And that's when comparing them to cards that were already overclocked. So cards that were already overclocked provided better thermals. So increasing the thermal output of the memory, and in the case of the Mac OC, the cores, I can't see that being particularly helpful for either model. The only redeeming feature of the Mac OC in our previous roundup was its quiet operation out of the box, spinning its fans at just 1450 RPM as it consumed around 20% less power than the competing models. But overclocking the cores and the memory to the same level used by models such as the Sapphire Pulse will see the power usage increase dramatically. So that's almost certainly gonna have an adverse effect on thermals as well as the operating temperature. And it has me wondering, will flashing this model for potentially around a 10% boost in performance end up being worth those trade-offs? Well, today we're gonna to find out. Gigabyte's WinForce OC is also quite an interesting case, as in this example, just the memory is getting a frequency bump, meaning the cores will remain at 1620 megahertz. And I feel for these less efficient models, that might be the way to go, as it helps avoid overwhelming the cooler. So let's look at how both models handle after the update. Okay, so with the 14 gigabits per second BIOS, the WinForce OC model sees no change to the core clock speeds. Yeah, we are seeing a 0.4% increase, but that's just run to run variance. So the key change for the Gigabyte card is the 17% increase in memory throughput. The Mac OC on the other hand has received a core and memory boost. And here we're seeing an 8% increase in core clock speed. And that gets the Mac OC up to speed with the other 5600 XT models. Here's a look at how those clock speed improvements impact gaming performance. Despite only receiving increased memory throughput, the WinForce OC was still boosted by 6%. The Mac OC on the other hand, which saw both the core and memory clocks increased, was boosted by 9%. And now it's able to match the other 5600 XT models. So what about GPU temperatures? Well, the higher clocked memory does put out quite a bit more heat. And as a result, the hotspot temperature for the WinForce OC increased by four degrees. Not a huge increase, but not trivial either. Then we see the Mac OC increased from 75 degrees with the 12 gigabits per second BIOS to 80 degrees with the 14 gigabits per second BIOS. So gigabytes are an increase of three degrees and MSI an increase of five degrees, but there is more to this as you'll see in a moment when we check out the fan speed data. Before that though, here's a look at the GDDR6 memory temperatures. And we're looking at a 10 degree increase in memory temperature for the Mac OC and just a five degree increase for the WinForce OC. Of course, the Gigabyte model doesn't see the GPU putting out any additional heat with the 14 gigabits per second BIOS, which is an issue faced by the Mac OC. 
Okay, so here we're just looking at GPU power and not graphics card power. So the GDDR6 memory isn't included in this metric. So although the cores haven't been overclocked on the WinForce OC model, power consumption was still increased as the GPU is now working a little harder as the faster memory allowed it to render more frames. The Mech OC on the other hand also sees an increase in core frequency and that boosted the power usage by almost 20%, hence the more significant increase in GPU temperature. That said, as we saw previously in the GPU testing, the MSI card only saw an extra two degrees over the WinForce model and the reason for that is the fan speed. And here we can see that the Gigabyte WinForce OC fan speed goes unchanged with the new BIOS still spinning at 1950 RPM. The Mac OC on the other hand, that sees a massive 51% increase in fan speed to deal with that almost 20% increase in GPU power usage, as well as the additional thermal output of the GDDR6 memory. So that explains why we didn't see a significant increase in GPU temperature. Unfortunately, the increased fan speed makes the Mech OC way louder than what was observed previously, whereas the WinForce OC sees no change in operating volume, so a very disappointing result here for MSI. Here's a look at the normalized GPU hotspot temperature by fixing the fan speed at 1600 RPM. The WinForce OC sees a three degree increase, which is a good result given the fan speed goes unchanged and we saw a 6% improvement in FPS performance. So in this instance, the BIOS update seems very much well worth it. The MSI Mech OC on the other hand, it saw a 12 degree increase in operating temperature at this more tolerable fan speed. And while not a dangerously high temperature, remember we are testing in a 21 degree room in quite a well ventilated case. As for GDDR6 temperatures, the WinForce OC saw a five degree increase with the new BIOS when manually locking the fan speed at 1600 RPM. Then we see that the Mech OC saw a 10 degree increase. So those results are pretty well in line with what we saw from the GPU. Okay, so last week we found out that the Mech OC and WinForce OC aren't particularly good Radeon RX 5600 XT graphics cards running hotter and louder than most competing products. So as expected, flashing them to run at more aggressive clock speeds only hurt thermal performance, and in the case of the Mech OC, it caused it to run considerably louder. Therefore, I feel Gigabyte's approach is much better, clearly aware that the cooler probably won't fare too well with any more thermal output from the GPU. They just left the core clocks alone. This is a pretty smart move as really you still get the benefit of the faster memory, which appears to be the primary bottleneck. But as I said, the cooler on this card isn't that great. There are better options available for the same or even less money as we found in the previous video. So if you want to check that out, go back and watch part two, part one, but part two will be coming shortly. Uh, and both of these cards, yeah, just not particularly great quality. Like plastic backplate and I get why they do it because people for some reason want backplates on everything regardless of whether it's aluminium or plastic or whether it serves a purpose or just becomes a heat trap but plastic backplate not very good don't like to see it and exactly the same thing on the MSI card so yeah that's not brushed aluminium that is just a thick bit of plastic that serves absolutely no purpose it doesn't help with GPU sag because this will just sag as well It'll probably start to uh, bend and flex through heating and cooling over an extended period of time. So just not cool. Don't like plastic on the back of these cards. Stop doing it. I get that it fools people and they think, hey, this is a cool card. It's got a back plate, but yeah, it's garbage. Don't do it. So in the case of Gigabyte's WinForce OC, we're getting a 6% performance boost with no increase in operating volume and just a three to five degree increase in GPU and memory temperatures. So not too bad, really. The Mech OC, on the other hand, goes from tolerable to somewhat obnoxious. Sure, the 10% performance boost is nice, but we could do without a five decibel increase in operating volume as the fans accelerate by 750 RPM. Not only that, but despite the increased volume, the MSI card is still running hotter than it was with the 12 gigabits per second BIOS. Of course, if you don't care about operating volumes, then I guess this trade-off is fine. But for me, the updated BIOS almost breaks the card. Granted, it's still a lot better than the 5700 XT version, which sees the fan spinning at 2800 RPM and generating 56 decibels of noise. That one is a real leaf blower. Personally though, I'd much rather MSI kept the core clocks at the base spec and just boost the memory up to 14 gigabits per second. So exactly what Gigabyte did with the WinForce OC. So in short, if you have the MSI Mech OC, then I feel you shouldn't flash it to the 14 gigabits per second BIOS. At least I wouldn't. Again, depends on whether you prioritize outright performance or you prefer a bit of a, a balance between operating volume, temperatures and performance, but 
I'll leave that for you guys to work out. You have all the facts and figures to make your own decision. Of course, for those of you buying one now, just ordering one of these, buying it off the shelf, you probably won't get a choice. It'll most likely come with the 14 gigabits per second BIOS, particularly if it is new stock. So yeah, there is that. As for the Gigabyte WinForce OC, when it comes to the new BIOS, I'd go for it. And hopefully Gigabyte doesn't decide to increase the core clocks as well. But at this point, you'd think they're not that keen to make any further changes to the specifications. But as I said, not really recommending either of these models. This one certainly is better with the BIOS update, whereas this one just runs hotter and louder. Yeah, it is faster, but it is a lot hotter and louder. So you'll have to work that out. But both of them, plastic back plates, not particularly great coolers. Yeah, you can do better. So anyway, that's how these models perform with the latest VBIOS version. So we can now go forward with part two of this testing, where I'll be checking out models such as the XFX 5600 XT Thick 2 Pro, the PowerColor 5600 XT Red Devil. Uh, we've got the MSI 5600 XT Gaming X, which is just complete polar opposite to this thing. Massive, cooler, well-designed, all that sort of stuff. So that's good to see. We also have the Gigabyte 5600 XT Gaming OC, which again is quite different to this model. Uh, we have the Asus Strix 5600 XT and the ASRock 5600 XT Phantom Gaming D3. So about half a dozen other more higher end, more premium 5600 XTs to come. And we'll be of course adding all of that to the data that was shown in this video. Plus there are a few more graphs that we didn't bother for this one. But anyway, that will be coming in just a few days time. Until then, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. If you'd like to join us over on Patreon, you get access to our exclusive Discord chat, which is an awesome place if you're a tech enthusiast and you love to talk about this stuff without having to deal with the trolling and all the nonsense that tends to go on elsewhere. It's a very mature, interesting discussion. Also, we have our monthly live streams, much of the same. Again, you can chat with Tim and I live there, ask questions, and we discuss sort of recent events. We did one just recently talking about uh, AMD's AM4 fiasco, and we'll have one again in about a week's time. So yeah, that's always cool. There's also behind the scenes stuff and Patreon Q&A, and yeah, it, it's cool if you're interested in that. Check it out if you are interested. But above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.